build our top uh, farming station, what we're going to do, uh, our first step is we want to make sure that we have a blast resistant layer between where the TNT can explode drills. Uh, especially when you are setting this up and tuning the exact timing to your server, you want to make sure that TNT is not going to fall down and blow up the rest of your machine. Or if you don't want to, feel free and just enjoy rebuilding all of your. Really, I'm not your mother. I can't tell you what to do. So essentially what we're going to be doing here, uh, we're going to be detecting uh, when our vertical machine brings up these quartz blocks. We want to be able to take them from going into a vertical fashion. We want to push them sideways. That way we can collect them. So the easiest way to do that, I'm going to go ahead and for as long as we have uh, the pistons that are pushing stuff up, we are going to build in two rows of pistons to push stuff sideways. That way we can push uh, aside a plate that is two blocks deep. That will help to conserve TNT if you're playing in a survival world. And also uh, it just makes the machine run a little bit smoother since it doesn't have to update as fast. Got our first one, just line in, and we're just going to go ahead and add in a second one on top of it. Okay, so that is the bit that actually does the hard work for us. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and wire this in. Uh, for this system, I'm going to be using the pink wool. Again, just for all the different systems, I like to color code my redstone. That way I know uh, what's going on with it. Out. change and what part is connected to what. We're just going to go ahead and put in our wool right behind our pistons, and that's where our redstone is going to be laid. So similar to with our docking stations, the trick to this is going to be getting all of this to fire at the same time. And we want to make sure that we are firing rapidly. Such a long machine, it's going to be a little bit difficult, but we're going to do our best to make it happen. So then our next step of what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and place a server on this plate, obsidian, to keep track of uh, when blocks are coming in. Uh, the problem with if you only have one sitting here on the edge, if there are no blocks coming in here, then it's not going to trigger at all. So in order to counteract that, we're actually going to go ahead and we're going to place a fail safe options. Uh, again, you can place some kind of where you'd like to, but I just place them a few apart just in case there's a block or two missing. It's not going to cause any issues. So for this one, you go ahead and do three side. And because our machine is so long, I'm actually going to do the same thing on this one, on this other side. Since our machine is 50 blocks long, I'm essentially just going to have it wired so that it will have two different inputs, one from each side, just to help counteract any redstone leg, anything that we have to deal with, make it a little simpler. This place observers, these are just going to detect if a block is being pushed up. And then from there, go ahead and wire these. server, head and wire around. Again, we're going to do that exact same thing on this other side, just as a fail safe, safe option and just to help uh, make sure that our machine is going to work just fine because it is as long as it is. Okay. So from here, we're going to go ahead and want to place down our 
redstone. And keep in mind that a redstone uh, can be powered for up to 15 blocks. So what we're going to do is we're kind of going to cheat that a little bit. Where if you try and split it down, and I'll show you a little bit clearer down on the side, where if you send the input into the middle, you can see on this entire model, we only have one input. This is a lot longer than 15 blocks. So essentially what we're going to do, we're going to use that split ability technique where we send it in and then have it split to go on 15 in each direction. Ten. 15. So right here is where my input is going to go in. I'm going to put a repeater right next to that. Fifteen. Again. So you can see if we place down a torch real quick. See, we've got power all the way down to there. This, we also have power all the way down to there. That is exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so we've gotten that all wired up. It actually turned out to be incredibly simple. Uh, we just have our redstone line coming out of the observers into a single repeater with just no extra ticks going up to separate that going up and around, and then every 15 uh, blocks we did add it one repeater, and then we didn't actually have to do any fancy timings with it, but we did have to come through and add in uh, blocks on our staircases. Otherwise you see where the redstone will connect like that. Went ahead and added in a block to make sure that they stay separated. Um, otherwise, it just creates an infinite loop and the pistons don't retract, and that causes other issues. So, we're going to go ahead and move on to the very last bit of this machine, which is also the, the trickiest. That's going to be the TNT blast chamber. To start with that, what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and insulate our observer lines. Sorry if you can hear my cat in the background. He is demanding that it is dinner time, but it is not. He just doesn't know how to read a clock. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to put all of the redstone that we had just laid in, that one into a uh, obsidian box just in case uh, a TNT goes astray. We don't want it blowing up our observers, our observer lines. That would be an unfortunate issue. Go ahead and cover that. What we're going to do, the idea is essentially that the blocks will be pushed over to here, and then TNT will fall and blow up the blocks. So to catch that, what we're going to do is grab some hoppers. Hoppers are wonderful at catching things, and then we're also going to grab uh, end stone labs. Uh, those have the added benefit of having an extremely high blast resistance, so as the TNT is falling, they don't actually take damage, um, but they also allow items to pass through into the hopper. So essentially what we're going to do is we're just going to make a plate of hoppers and you want to line them all into each other um, and then you can feed them down into an item sorter or however you want to process the items yourself. Um, that is entirely up to you but for the sake of this I'm just going to show uh, the quick vision, the quick version. I'm just going to fill this in with hoppers show you what to do from there. Top of your hoppers, stone slabs go right on top. Grab that spot. Okay. 
And those are just for some added blast resistance while still allowing the blocks to fall through. So that is the easy part of the TNT blast chamber done. Why don't we go ahead and move on to the actual mechanism up above, and then we'll link that down into our vertical flying machine, because that's where it gets plugged into. To get started on our TNT platform, what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our top line of pink wool on top of the pistons, out over four. So two, three, and then on that fifth block, place a red wool. We're going to use red for our TNT platform, because I think that makes sense. And then we're going to go up nine more blocks. So one, two, four, five, seven, and nine. That is the height that we are going to be putting our TNT. Um, just that way, when it falls, it will leave enough space or the dispenser to not be blown up by the blast radius. I come out a little ways. Five. Come out five blocks from that. What we're going to do is grab a obsidian block. And then we're going to go ahead and count over eight. Two, five, seven, eight. Place another obsidian, and we're just going to do this all the way down the line. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've done a quick mock up of what we're going to be showing, how this is going to work. So essentially, what we're going to be doing is we have our dispensers, which are going to be for TNT. A pulse comes through. They will dispense a lit TNT, and it will get stuck on the piston. Then, after seven meters time, so that's 28 ticks, uh, they're going to go ahead and uh, retract, which will then drop the TNT after holding it the perfect amount that it will explode right around here. So it'll explode still in the air, which means that we don't have to worry about the hopper is being exploded, um, but it'll still be able to detonate all of the blocks. Why don't we go ahead and show you how this is built? Uh, it's really simple. So what we're going to do, we're going to come over here. We're going to choose two star obsidian. Works easiest in a pair. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the outside wool on each one. There's one. There is one. Then we're going to go ahead and choose our middle spot, and that's going to be our plug-in. So then from there, we're going to go ahead and count back eight blocks. So one, two, four, five, seven, eight. On that last one, we will go up one block. And on those blocks that we just placed, we will go ahead and place our repeaters. We want to make sure that we place seven of them. So one, two, three, four, five, seven, and we're going to set those to our full ticks. And then the block that these repeaters go into get a redstone torch. Then we're going to come down and we want to leave one block of space below the dispenser, and that's where the TNT is going to sit. And then we're going to add in a piston. So we're going to come down, leave one block space, go, go back one, so that way when the piston extends, it will block where the TNT is. Do that on the other one as well. A block space, one, back one. Just put an obsidian block on top of our pistons. 
just to make them a little bit safer. Connect our two Vidian pistons together. And again, you don't necessarily need to use obsidian for all of this. I just like it because it has a much higher blast resistance. Uh, so you can go ahead and the wiki actually has a good list of blocks that have high blast resistance. You can choose from there which ones you'd like to build out of. I just really like obsidian because it's the toughest and does not explode by TNT. So then what we'll do, just going to lay in a redstone line right on top of our obsidian. And then we're going to connect that up to our redstone torch. Let's go ahead and build a staircase down. Have redstone dust coming out of the torch and then down our staircase. And then we will connect to our obsidian part with a repeater. And you can hear that, that means that the pistons have extended. So default, we want the pistons to extend. That way they are always uh, ready for the TNT to sit on. And then as the pulse travels through, they'll actually turn off and retract. And that is what will drop the TNT down onto the blocks. Then the last bit that we have to do is we just add redstone right on top. It will stop on top of our obsidian. And this is what will trigger the dispenser. Go ahead and line that out. And then we will just do a line going across here and connect all of these together once they're done being built. Now we're getting into the very end stage of our farm. We only have a couple parts left to do. And for this last bit, uh, I went ahead and I did it because it's just going to take a little bit of time, but it's easy enough to do. What we're going to do is we're going to create a redstone torch tower. That we're going to connect. Come down on. We're going to connect it up to our purple line. So our purple line, right after where the observer comes in, um, the prime, the vertical flying machine, we also want it to send a pulse up the torch tower to dispense our TNT. That way, as the quartz is, or whatever you're mining is pushed up, there is actually a TNT primed and ready to go. So in order to do that, what you do is you make two separate bridges. It works best if you have two TNTs go, so we need two separate pulses up the ladder. The first one, we're just going to go ahead and go uh, you can choose wherever you'd like to cross it. Uh, the torch tower can be uh, anywhere that you want it to go, as long as it doesn't touch the flying machine or impact any other redstone. You can see this one, the torch goes by a repeater, which is fine because the repeater can take the redstone input from the, the one side. So updating that torch is not going to do anything to mess up that circuit, and then we have a gap there all the way up into here we just connected it straight in with the simple redstone line so then underneath what we're going to do is we're going to connect it in and we're going to use a full or ticks on a repeater for our first line and then that will wrap around and go into a repeater that goes into torch tower and then we are going to go ahead and set our second one. And we need seven full tick repeaters and one that only has its base tick. So a total of 29 ticks of delay between the two pulses. That will give your machine enough time to dispense the first TNT, uh, retract the piston to drop it, and then extend piston to catch the next TNT. I may need to play with this timing a little bit on your server if there is any lag or if there's any um, TPS issues, uh, which is ticks per second. Uh, if you need, if the TNT is not detonating at the exact right time, you can either mess with these repeaters a little bit or 
up on top, you can go ahead and add in uh, pulses, delays up here to try and get the timing just right. Just going to be a little bit of trial and error as you dial it into your individual server. Um, and that's all we can really do with that one. But the last bit that we have to do is we just have to go ahead and plug all of the different parts together. We already plugged in the purple line that goes all the way up to restart it. Looks like we still have to plug in our blue, grab some purple. And it's just as simple as go ahead and we connect our lines into where we had already started. Earlier we had made a staircase, and so we're just going to connect that staircase over to the start of our machine. It's nothing fancy, no specific measurements. Go ahead and plug the two pieces together. Do this on both sides, because we have blue input, red to both. So then that will do is as soon as the drills return, this will fire the horizontal machine. And we had already plugged in the horizontal machine to then send the vertical machine. And then when the vertical machine docks, we plugged that in with our purple line here into the drills to send them again. So that is the entire machine moving itself successfully. And that is the entire build of the tunnel boring machine without TNT moving. I really appreciate you guys uh, hanging out through the series with me. I know it's a really long tutorial, but it's a lot of different and complex machines that I wanted to make sure I had a clear explanation of each one. Uh, so thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you guys have any issues with it or need any troubleshooting tips, uh, go ahead, drop comments down. Doing my best to stay up to date with those and answer any questions that you have with them. Uh, if there are any common threads, I may put out a uh, troubleshooting video just to help make or help solve everybody's problems at once. But I hope you guys appreciate it. If you did, drop the thumbs up. If you hate this machine and think it's an utter piece of trash, go ahead, drop the thumbs down. I will catch you guys next video.